In this video, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the Mind Finder puzzle in the puzzle generator for PowerPoint. Now, the first thing you want to do is create a blank slide in PowerPoint. So if you have any text uh, boxes or placeholders here, delete them first. And then the first thing we want to do is up here, choose our trim size. Uh, for this example, I'm going to do 8.5 by 11, which I'm already on. And then once you've chosen that, we're going to go to Puzzles and then to Mind Finder here. Now, our first option here is to have a game explanation or how to, just a quick uh, brief text introduction how to play the game. If you want to include this, you can by ticking the box here. If you don't, I'm going to leave it blank and then click Continue. You can also um, write in here and customize this if you so wish. So click continue. Now our first option here is to choose our colors. So our first option here is for the headers font color. Now if you're publishing a KDP, uh, you will typically want this to be black or gray. I'm going to leave this on a black. And our next option here is for the color of our minds. Again, if you're publishing on KDP, it's likely that you want to do this in a black or gray. I'm going to do this in a gray like this. Our next option here is to select um, our font, our size and styling for our headers. So that's what appears above each puzzle. So if you just quickly look here, we've got our grid title, Mind Finder. So above each one, it will be um, Mind Finder 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this font that you select here. I'm going to leave it for um, leave it on the default for this example. Our next option is our title. So as I just briefly mentioned, that's what appears above each grid or each puzzle. You can um, leave as it is, translate it, change the words or leave blank. It's completely up to you. Our next option is to start our number in that. So typically you'd want to do this at one. But say, for example, you made 20 puzzles and then you wanted to make another 20 puzzles to keep the numbers um, consecutive. You could just put start at 21 here and then the puzzles would be 21, 22, 23 and so on. So fourth. Our option here is uh, to hide titles. Now this we're going to um, go into a little bit later. Um, why you might want to use that. So just ignore that, um, that feature for now. Our next option here is to choose our uh, page number. That's how many pages worth of puzzles you want to create. So th in this example, I'm going to stick with five. Our next option here is to choose how many grids per page you want. That's how many puzzles on each page that you want. For this example, I'm going to go with six. And then here you can select a different grid dimension. Obviously, the, the larger the grid, the more the more difficult the puzzle will be. I'm going to stick on five by five for this example. And now one of our last options here is to put in how many mines you want in the grid. So I will typically do um, half of the, of the um, total grid size. So five by five, 25, half of that is, is roughly 12. That's what I would typically do. But obviously you can experiment uh, with this to find the difficulty level that you desire. And now our final option here is to add left and right margins. So this is pretty essential for KDP. We want to have a margin down either side. And in here, you can put between zero and one. I'm going to go with three quarters of an inch. And then once we've done that, if we select OK to generate our puzzles. And now what I'm going to show you, now our puzzles are generated and perhaps you want to change some of the formatting of them, you can. Um, let me show you a quick example here. 
So for example, you want to move the titles across to the side a little bit. What you can do is you select them here. And then up here, you can choose a distance. Let's do 0.3. And then you can go up, down, left or right. If I go left, I go left once more. And then I would do a left just a little bit more like this. Like so, and you see this will apply all of your changes all the way through the puzzles and solutions. Now, a final feature you might find um, handy is to change the font sizing or the font itself. After you generated, you might think, actually, I want a different font or a different size. If you just select the shapes you want to change, like so, and then click change individual fonts here. You now have the options where you can change the font, the size, and the styling. So if I just take bold off and I'll make them italic. Now again, this will apply to all of your puzzles all the way through. Now I've shown you that, what I want to do is show you how you can have a bit more flexibility regarding the amount of puzzles and solutions you have per page using the bulk import and export tools. So the first thing we want to do is choose a square trim size here. So I'm going to go for 85 by 85. Then if we go into puzzles and then into mind finder, and then what we want to do here is we want to have the left and right margins unticked. We want to have the grids per page one, and then I'm going to do 40 um, puzzles in this example. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide the titles in here. You'll learn a little bit more why I hide the titles a little bit later on. So once you've set all your settings, what you want to do is just click OK to create. And then once our puzzles are created, what we want to do is up the top here is click export slides as PNG. Now initially we just want to export the puzzles. So we do one to 40, I'll type in here puzzle. Uh, I'm going to keep the image quality the same. And then we're going to choose a folder. So if we go to uh, C drive, Correct folder, mine finder, and in there, a folder called puzzles, and then click OK. And then once we exported them, what we want to do is now export the solutions. So back up the top again, export slides as PNG, and then we're going to do slides 41 to 80. So if I type solutions in here, again, keep the quality and resolution the same. Click OK, and then we're going to browse to that folder again. So on the C drive, Mind Finder, and I'm going to create a folder called Solutions. Now in this folder, click OK, then we're going to wait for that to export. Now that's done, what we're going to do, we're going to delete all these slides. We're going to add a blank first slide, deleting any placeholder on there. And then what we're going to do is choose a trim size. So you want to choose a trim size that you're going to create your um, book at. So I'm going to go for 8.5 by 11 here. And then at the top, you want to select bulk import images. Now here, make sure you're in the, uh, the folder you created. So for me, mine finder. And then initially, I'm going to do the puzzles. So we're going to the puzzles, click OK. Now, if you look here, we have a lot more options to how many puzzles we can have per slide. You can go all the way from one up to 20. So for this example, I'm going to choose eight puzzles per slide. Now here I can add a title above each image. This is why I hid the title in the initial settings because I can add my own title here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call that puzzle. 
And then down the bottom here, you can set the minimum margins and spacing between images. What I typically, uh, typically do is just leave this as it is and tick attempt to optimize spacing because this will keep everything tightly knit together. So once you're happy with your settings here, click OK and wait for that to import. And as you can see here, we have eight puzzles per slide. Now, the next thing you want to do is go back into the bulk import images. And this time we're going to select our solutions folder. And then here, again, you can choose a different amount of images per slide that you want to have for the solutions. So in this example, if I choose 20, and then rather than puzzle above, I'm going to put solution. And again, I'm going to keep all the other settings exactly the same. Click OK. And there you can see I now have eight puzzles per slide and I have 20 solutions per slide. Now this tool really uh, makes the puzzle generator a lot more powerful and gives you a lot more flexibility regarding the amount of puzzles and solutions you have per page. I hope this quick overview into the uh, May, uh, into the MindFinder feature of the Puzzle Generator helps you. Thanks for watching.